Hello and welcome to my latest weekly video news from Madison's. Well, I know I've talked a lot over the past years over the bank of mum and dad, the rising phenomena that is, um, was pred predominantly mum and dad, but has now been extended to grandparents, siblings, uh, the bank of family, probably what it should be more aptly called now, helping their grown up children get on the housing ladder. And a really interesting report came out with lots and factors. things. I'm going to have to read some of this because it's just too much for me to have remembered. So um, really interestingly, 63%, two thirds of people had got onto the housing ladder with help from family members. That was predominantly from mum and dad. Um, and interestingly, it was shown that um, if they had had help from their mum and dad, they would have got on the property ladder six years sooner than those who didn't. And if their help came from grandparents, then they would have got on the property ladder nine years sooner. So showing that if grandparents can stamp up the money, then it helps them along a lot quicker. Really interesting fact, um, daughters on average got 51,000 to help them buy a property. Sons got 65. I don't know why that would be anyway, but really interesting, isn't it? I don't know. I could say all sorts of things about female saving, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to generalise, but yeah, really interesting fact. 14% um, of help actually came from siblings, brothers and sisters. I find that really surprising. I always think like with your brothers and sisters, you're probably neck, neck and neck on how you're performing, but clearly some um, wealthy siblings under in there. 21% um, um, asked for help. Um, the rest, all those other people who received help did not ask for help. So their parents or grandparents or brother and sister freely offered the money. Very grateful, but interestingly, one fifth of the ones that got help wish they'd never accepted after the process. Why was that? Well, um, over 50% of parents felt they should have a say in what the property was that was bought, uh, felt very much it was part of their decision, and that hacked their children off who felt that actually it was going to be their home, they were taking on the mortgage commitment, so that didn't go down <clears throat> very well. 17% um, wanted to get involved in the decorating of the property. Um, really interesting and yeah strings strings attached in some way to almost 60 percent of those gifts so uh really interesting that a fifth that they after the process said actually i wish you'd never given it to me um seven out of ten plan to pay back in some way Isn't that sweet so uh seven out of ten 70 percent said that they would absolutely like to contribute back to that um i have to say this is what i see all the time at the moment um, a lot of a lot of sales that i do downsizing one of the biggest reasons i'm given is we want to help our grown-up children get on the property ladder and therefore the numbers do get quite important they obviously want to achieve as much as they possibly can to hopefully mean they can buy their next home and help their children out and that segues me beautifully into my next topic I'm just gonna have a look at, which is the whole concept of what is your home worth? Um, what is its true value? Now, there's a lot of bad press that agents get in terms of overvaluing property to win an, an instruction. And then what will happen is that agent will tie you into a long contract, let's say three months. And during that three months, they'll cite market conditions, um, change in buyer behavior, anything that basically doesn't say that actually they've got their value intentionally or unintentionally wrong that's another whole point i'll touch on that in a minute um but basically looking to do a price reduction within that contract period um so sellers understand any feelings they saw about that went with an agent because they promised a great value then haven't achieved that um the reality is as agents sometimes we do just make mistakes um i'm sure there are some agents out there who put a nice figure on something in the hope that win instruction. But generally, I think sellers are pretty clued up as to what they feel their property is worth. Um, I love that statistic from right with that 78% of people think their house is the best on the road. Um, there can only really be one or two best houses, but anyway. Um, but yeah, sometimes we do genuinely make a mistake. Um, we might have been given some wrong information about a property, which comes to light during the sale process, parking or lack of. Um, which way the, the garden faces or doesn't, um, you know, do other little bits and pieces about renovation costs, things like that. So sometimes there's misinformation that goes on, but sometimes as well, you just have to react to what the market is doing. Ultimately, a house is worth or any property is worth what a buyer is prepared to pay for it. 
that buyer does not give a fig about what you paid for it, the money you've invested in it, um, what you want to achieve from it. It's completely irrelevant. Um, they simply want to pay what they perceive to be fair value in a competitive market. So there'll be other properties going to market and they will compare and which house presents best value for them. So as an agent, sometimes you have to put your hand up and go, we've got it wrong. It's really hard for sellers to hear that their property value hasn't gone up much. Sometimes it's gone backwards. So anybody who bought in 2022, certainly at the beginning of the year or back into 2021, you still could be in negative territory about what your property is worth. Simply won't have gone up in value. And despite the fact that you want to achieve more, that doesn't mean that you'll get there. You need to listen to what your buyer says your property is worth and listen to what the market is telling you. The reality is, I think the adage location, location, location should be changed to price, 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 because the worst house on the worst road will sell at the right price. And equally, the best house on the best road will not sell at an overinflated price. It all has its value and it all has to find its value. So my biggest heed to sellers, stop worrying about what you need to achieve. If you're serious about moving, listen to what the market is telling you. Um, an agent should be able to show you comparables to give you confidence in their valuation. Um, but if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So um, yeah, just a little adage there to add on as well. Um, a great property I've launched. I love a plot. As you all know, I built my own house. I'm an avid self-builder. So this wonderful plot out at Rotherfield, £800,000. It's got permission, uh, consented permission to build a 5,000 square foot house, ultra contemporary, grand designs, beautiful in a lovely, lovely plot. Generous plot, two and a half acres, um, farmland, sort of countryside views up a little private drive. So lovely. If you would like more details on that, do give us a call. Schools are back next week. I hope you have a great final week of your school holidays, whatever you're up to. Um, or looking forward to uh, all the kids going back and uh, settling into the autumn market. And I look forward to telling you all about that next week. Bye-bye.